Dr. Paula Newsom, the first African-American female member of the American Academy of Optometrists, has an office right here in Charlotte. After an eye doctor's appointment following high school in her hometown of Wilmington, North Carolina, Dr. Newsom knew she wanted to be a doctor. Well, I always knew I'd be a doctor. I just wasn't sure what type. I've always been very um, good in sciences, and in particular the biological sciences. However, I went and got my eyes examined before I entered uh, the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill that summer, and I had an eye exam, and it was just the most fascinating thing I had ever experienced. And after that encounter, I decided that I wanted to be an eye doctor. Today, her practice is thriving in the middle of uptown in an office building she not only works in, but also owns. Dr. Newsom says that in order to go from dreaming about your career to actually achieving in it, you have to make wise decisions early in your life. Um, I made sure that I was very, very committed and I had a block of time every day that I devoted to studying. I would be in class from 8 in the morning till roughly 5 in the afternoon. I'd come home, I'd eat, lay down for a minute. At 7 o'clock I was in the library every evening and I was there every night from 7 until 11, Monday through Friday. After graduating optometry school as one of the top students in her class, Dr. Newsom served in a residency program. This led to teaching, which she says is one of her most valuable lifelong contributions. After I finished my residency, however, I then went to the University of Missouri, St. Louis, and I taught people how to become eye doctors. I did that for about a year, year and a half before I went into private practice. I chose to do a residency because I always wanted to teach. When I was going through my academic training, I saw very few people who looked like me. And I have a passion for children in particular, and I have a passion for transferring knowledge. After moving to Charlotte, Dr. Newsom went from employee to employer when she opened her practice here. It was one of many firsts in her life. And in order to really prepare me to be a business owner, I went to uh, Central Piedmont and I took every course that they had in the Small Business Center. I went to Queens College, I took macro and microeconomics. Um, I'm constantly taking courses on how to be a better entrepreneur. And I have gone from business owner now to entrepreneur because, um, yeah, business owner, if you're not there, you don't make any money. Um, I can leave. I just got back from China not too long ago, and I can, the practice still functions. So I am now an entrepreneur. Thank God. Hallelujah. Successful entrepreneur is just one of the latest in a string of firsts for Dr. Newsom. You know, when I was growing up in Wilmington, I was one of the first African Americans to integrate schools. I wasn't in the very first year, I was in the second. So I was called the N-word and I was spat on and all of that. And for me, breaking barriers has just been something that is uh, a part of life. She says there are three specific things you should do when you discover something you enjoy and may want to make a career out of. I would tell them, first of all, to find out as much as you can about the subject. Second of all, I would say try to find somebody who's doing that, what you like, or something close to it, and try to shadow them. The third thing that I would say is make sure that you understand that whatever you think it is that you want to do is written on paper with a pencil. And if you decide that that's not really what you want to do, erase it and go on and write down the next goal. Dr. Newsom says that one of the secrets to her success is something we all have equal access to. Well, see, that's why um, I think that you've got to have a good, strong spiritual foundation because I think if you don't have a good, strong spiritual foundation, you'll fall for anything. And when you know who you are, but more importantly, whose you are, you're grounded. And as long as you're grounded, you know, God said, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. And I believe that. And so when you, when you go, you earnestly pray. And I don't know if we can talk about prayer, but... Um, I'm going to talk about prayer because it's an integral part of my life. Um, I do believe that God is there with me. I don't think I can fail. I think that there will be setbacks. I think those are just opportunities to reassess the situation, learn the lesson, and move on. According to this entrepreneur, if you limit yourself, you lose. Here's her advice to a young man who visited her office recently. And I shared with him a quote from Benjamin Mays, and bottom line on this quote is, you know, the real failure in life is not having a high enough aim. And if you, if you aim too low, 
you're going to wind up with the chickens. But you got to soar with the eagles. It's always been my philosophy. And never, ever settle for the status quo. It's because it's out of the box thinking. It's you don't always have to rent. You can go down a different path. You can do things differently. Just because society says go to college and get a job, you can create jobs. And not only can you create a job for you, but you can create a job for others. So it's out of the box thinking that I'd like for people seeing this to get from me. Don't ever let anybody paint you into a corner. Whatever it is that you decide you want to do, you pursue it and you pursue it with passion. Thank you.